Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. and I'm here to talk to you today about the ENFJ personality type. And what I found is that the ENFJ is a kind of a leader of the people, a kind of humanitarian, a kind of protagonist, a kind of the good or ideal king or queen, the King Arthur or the Lion King, the person that creates community with all kinds of people and all kinds of animals and all kinds of beings. The person that manages diplomacy between all these groups. The person that guides everyone forward and gives people direction. The person that gives everyone a place to be. The person that uh, guides people to new places when necessary. Helping people find a new place to make their way to live when the old place, the old environment doesn't give what is necessary anymore. And the ENFJ is the original visionary or the wanderer that can walk their own path and that seeks to walk in a way that is true to themselves and fears becoming a fraud. Yeah, I've studied ENFJs for many, many years now. And as an INFJ, I've come to notice that a lot of ENFJs struggle with this feeling of being a fraud, you know, feeling that you can't trust your own words, not being sure of if what you are saying is true and if it really is a reflection of you. Am I just saying it because, uh, do people just believe it because I'm good at saying it or is do people believe it because it's actually true, you know? Wanting to actually do something that is your own, you know, that sense of wanting to avoid being a fraud comes from a very healthy place in the ENFJ. ENFJs are sometimes portrayed as manipulative, but in reality, an ENFJ is far from it a person that desires to be original, you know, to be, to do something new, to do something truly new, to truly walk your own path and to do it well with good code of conduct with ethics with a strong moral standard and that is why our ENFJ strives to be proud of themselves proud of their accomplishments proud of what they have done proud of who they are and ENFJs struggle with a lot of things in this process you know a lot of uh, people paint the picture that an ENFJ will just naturally find their place and fit in in the world. But that's not exactly true. A lot of ENFJs struggle with feeling like outsiders. It's not uncommon to meet ENFJs that struggle with uh, having been bullied or having felt like outcasts. Or having felt like they don't fit in anywhere. And actually that's one of the common states of an ENFJ that is in the pursuit of growth and self-actualization, you know. You need to find a place where you can be yourself, find people that you can connect with, and then you can build from there. You can't build from an environment where people don't accept you, or people are trying to force you, force something on you, or trying to control you, trying to block your path, or trying to force you on a path you don't want. Your parents might have strong standards for you, they might want you to become this or that person, or to do this or that, and they might be pushing their code of conduct and their ethics and their belief system on you because perhaps they often also come from a similar point of view but you have to find your own way and that's something important you have to in that sense kind of free yourself from parental figures and from society's life recipe and you have to be able to maintain your independence in this can I keep walking my own path? Can I do what I want? Can I make sure that I can truly be myself? That I can truly be someone original? And can I find my own ethics, my own code of conduct, my own integrity by learning to trust my own voice of what is right and wrong instead of societies? You know, it's sometimes... Uh, believed that extroverted feeling makes you think that everyone else's arguments are your arguments that a lot of people point this picture of extroverted feeling the one of the core enfj processes as being submissive to what people say just believing anything everyone tells you or just voicing or echoing what everyone else says but in Reality, extroverted feeling is this interest in what other people do and say, how other people dress, how other people think, and how other people talk. What an ENFJ is always trying to do is fit this and align this with what they think, what they feel, and what they think. So it comes down to what other people say, and then that process of defining, do I like this or not? Do I like that other people behave this way towards one another? Do I like that people dress like this? Do I like that people treat each other this way? 
And this is where an ENFJ finds their voice. The ENFJ finds their voice in listening to and studying the world around them and learning from different cultures, different ways of life, studying their various groups. You know, ENFJs uh, in literature tend to have this remarkable ability of knowing pretty much everyone in school. You know, the ENFJ, for some reason, they know every group, group every sub click. They know how they dress, they know how they talk, they know everything about them. And they've been able to rehearse and to gain an awareness of this. And in this, they have found kind of their own identity as kind of a mix of it all. You know, they've studied and taken on some of the traits of that group and some of that group. And, you know, they often land themselves in this position where they can connect with anybody. They can go and talk with the nerds just as the, they can talk with the popular kids. They can talk with pretty much anyone. So ENFJs come from this position of being able to talk with anyone, being able to connect with anyone, being able to reach anyone. So... In this, the ENFJs can feel a sense of identitylessness. If I am not a nerd, if I am not a pop, one of the popular kids, if I'm not a rock star, like all the others that have their identities and have their cliques and everything, then what am I? And uh, this is kind of where you realize, when you start to realize for the first time that you are the Lion King, in the sense of realizing that you're kind of the one that stands above it all, you are kind of the unifying aspect of everyone. You are the embodiment of the entire sum of the people you have met and of everyone you've talked to, all people's different ideas. And you are the kind of exemplar in this also because you are the good things about all of these groups. Or at least you try to be. You try to be the good part of the nerds. The good part of the popular people, the good part of the rock stars, you try to learn from these aspects. You try to be that kind of exemplar to other people, the example of these people. You are the communicator, their voice, their spokesperson. And you are also the person that everyone feels connected to, even though you are in one way different from everyone else. And uh, this is... the. Uh, the part that connects to feeling bullied or feeling isolated or feeling excluded. Because when you don't truly feel that connection to other people or when you feel like you're an outsider, there is this desire of wanting to barge in, you know. If somebody doesn't approve of you, you want to find out why you need to connect with them. You need to find a way to find some kind of connection. But sometimes there is no ground for this connection and that's very difficult for an ENFJ. When a group is close to you or when a clique refuses to open to you, you know, often you can talk your way into any situation but some people won't listen, they won't hear you out, they won't try to understand, they judge you too quickly, they put on their ideas of you and uh, they judge you based on your class or your gender or all kinds of things, you know, people, if they want to judge you, they'll find something to judge in you. They'll find a pimple somewhere misplaced, they'll find something uh, wrong with your teeth, they'll find something wrong with you. So that's just something to recognize, that you don't need to win everyone over. And that's something uh, a lot of ENFJs come to realize in the process of self-actualization, because you can start out trying to... Uh, prove to another person that you can become just as successful as they can and that you can uh, do what they can do and that you can be like them, you know. You you want to prove that you're just like them in one way or that you can be just like them. Uh, but then it's a kind of like a loss of self in that pursuit in trying to prove yourself to the wrong people. And here ENFJs have to recognize one thing and that is, do I want to prove myself to this kind of person? Do I want to be the kind of person they are? Do I want to have what they have? And often the answer is no, I don't need their power. I don't need their money. I don't need their success or the traits or the aspects they have. That's not important to me. And what you end up kind of realizing is I'm not trying to prove myself to them. I'm just trying to understand them. That's what ENFJs come to realize after time is uh, I am simply trying to understand them and to find a place for them in my community, in my tribe. I'm just trying to connect them to everyone else around me. I, you have this idea in your head, this, um, you know, if INFJs have this black hole of ideas uh, with like just this bigger system of uh, thoughts and uh, feelings and uh, 
processing and so on. ENFJs have this massive social network. It's like ENFJs have this uh, whole matrix of connections like a Facebook insider head where they know everybody and they know who everybody knows and they know what people do and what they dress like. And they have this system, this, this swirling system, this uh, organized list of uh, connections and threads and that and that and that person and this culture and that society and that group and that clique, you know. Uh, and just a database of all of that, you know. And the ENFJ... Uh, ENFJs are not always associated with memory, but one of the strongest memories you have as an ENFJ is that ability to memorize connections and people. Uh, that's something ENFJs intuitively are really good at memorizing dresses, what people wear, what people do, who they are, what their name was, you know, all those things. Where often, um, but also kind of the connections between everything. ENFJs remember the connections between everyone and everything. And uh, they also have like this mental discipline and they got this together with INFJs, you know, they have the mental discipline and the ability to organize this information, this information in a consistent, coherent way, you know, uh, they want to relate everyone to everything. They want to understand the entire kind of circle of life and uh, see how everybody fits with everything, wanting everyone to fit in with everything. You know, it's not that ENFJs, uh, uh, ENFJs don't mind that the, the uh, ENFJs, actually, ENFJs actually celebrate difference, you know. They love people that are different, that dress uniquely, that have their unique cultural rituals. And I think they kind of love the challenge of it as well, you know. How do I unite these two people or these two groups that are so different? How do I speak to the black community and the white community as one? How do I make these people get along? How do I build relationships between them? How do I make it all fit together? And just to sum this up, to give you an understanding of what to do next, I want you as an ENFJ to look at your cognitive processes. And you have four key processes you need to look at. First, extroverted feeling. Extroverted feeling is your ability to understand relationships and people around you. What they wear, how they dress, who they are, what they talk about, what they like, what they dislike. Just your ability to know people and to know who you are as a result of this. You find out about yourself by knowing this. You know, I'm like that person and I'm like that person and then I'm a little like that person. I have that quality from that person and I have that quality from that person. Just this ability to build your own identity through the stuff study of the people and of everything you read and hear from other people. Then you have feeling judging, which is your ability to be diplomatic, your ability to talk to people, your code of conduct, your ability to act and to live in a way that is good towards others, how you impact other people with what you say, what you do, how you impact people with how you dress and how you talk and how you live, your code of conduct, your ethics in a sense of how do I want to be towards others? How do I want to live as a person? Then you have intuition and judging, which is your ability to be an original person, you know, to walk your own path in life, to find your own lifestyle, you know, to find who you are away from everyone else, to find this kind of vision inside of yourself, like where do I want to go? What are my aims? What is it I'm trying to achieve in life? Often ENFJs have this larger ground their overarching pursuit, this idea, this path, and often they can't explain it to other people because intuition and judging is hard to explain. Then ENFJs have extroversion and intuition, and together an extroverted and intuitive type is a person that is aware of new opportunities, of change, and of what's happening around them. The person that can see this person is going to get into a conflict with that person. And if I say that this person is going to do that and then this is going to happen. Your ability to see patterns and connections. Your ability to see where things are leading in real time. Where will this lead? Where will this take me? What will happen if I do this? What will happen if I do this? The ENFJs have this remarkable ability to see chains of events. That will lead to that, will lead to that, will lead to that. That's extroverted intuition. That just the ability to connect. And the ENFJs with intuition and judging connect and uh, work with this in a very organized fashion. They know where things are leading. They see often exactly how to get where they want, what they need to do, what they need to get, what they need to have, what they need to do, what, they need, what opportunities are available for them, what bus will take them there. You know, just seeing those things. 
Now there are four core limitations that you have to consider as an ENFJ. The first is uh, the limitation of accuracy. You know, it's important not to dwell on what you've said and if it's correct or not, but it's important to recognize when it is incorrect, if what you said turns out to be wrong, correct for it and move forward and learn from the mistake. But don't dwell on it, don't hold on to the anxiety of, oh, I said something wrong. Just move forward and try to move forward. Don't hold on to the emotion. Just say, oh, I did a mistake and I'll fix it. And then the other's point of view it is, don't be too critical of yourself. Don't become too ashamed of yourself for not having done something as perfectly as you could have or not having gotten as far as you wish you would or not having done it according to your inner standard of perfection. You know, if you make a mistake, or if you find something you could improve on in the future, make that improvement and make that fix. But don't dwell on it. Don't hold on to the anxiety of it because that's not going to give you anything. And then when it comes to introverted sensing, it's important uh, to not hold on to or become frustrated with how your life used to be or with uh, what's standing in your way or what's holding you back. You know, Don't dwell on what's holding you back. Look at what opportunities are present for you. If uh, my life might be shit right now, but what buses are leaving right now from my bus stop, you know, what options can I take to make things better? That's very important. Otherwise, you might risk staying in a bad position for a long time. And then it comes to sensing and perceiving, you know, don't hold on to uh, that fear that sensing and perceiving represents that uh, fear of uh, change or of uh, something going wrong, you know, of a uh, car being broken or of uh, something not going the way it should have or of uh, your dream not working out or of something coming up that you didn't anticipate. If something comes up that didn't that you didn't anticipate, just say, oh, that's not good. <laughs> and then try to find a way forward and try to find a way to remain true to your vision and to make to remain true to your path that is the key position of growth for an enfj and i know it's not always easy but if you want to be yourself if you want to reach who you can be if you want to become actualized this is the roadmap this is where you start and if you want to help out or if you want to support this project into exploring the personality types and into exploring enfjs and your personality type further do visit my patreon page where you can leave a small donation, anything helps, or share this video, or subscribe to my YouTube channel, or like or leave a comment. Thank you for being around and for helping out and for being just awesome. And I hope you like this video and I hope to see you guys in the next video.